Hey guys, Maritza here. Bringing you my uh, daily reflection blog. First of all, I want to take the time to thank all of you that have been commenting on my initial blog and for accepting my apology. You know, one of the things that is very difficult for us humans to admit is that we were wrong or that we have defects. Shame is another thing that's hard to deal with. And I have felt lots of shame in my life. And I think that as humans, when we feel shame, we try to hide these things. I know that I have. One of the things that my journey has taught me is never, never make everything an absolute because things are changeable. And what's right for me may not be right for you and vice versa. And I think one of my biggest downfall is in order for me to hide my shame, I have to generalize everything. And that is what allowed me to sleep at night, which a, it is a very poor coping mechanism. As the years progress, as we get older, I know for me, as I've gotten older, I look at life totally different. I'm far from perfect, but I've come a long way, a very long way from my, my way of thinking, my selfishness, my me ego personality that I develop during the course of the years as a self-defense mechanism. I'm not going to blame my mother. I'm not going to blame my father. I'm not going to blame life because, you know, pointing fingers is something we humans love to do. I want to take full responsibility for everything that I've done in my life. And I'm also going to learn that although I've done mistakes in my life, what can I do to make things better? And that's going to be my key from now on. I'm not going to allow things to really affect me the way they have in the past because it's solved absolutely nothing. It's like solving one problem with another problem, putting band-aids on top of band-aids. After a while, that gets old. So in saying that, reflecting, asking myself on a daily basis, what can I do? to make my world better, to make the world of others that I share this world with better, instead of blaming and, and attacking the way that I have. It's been a constant pattern in my life, or at least in my YouTube presence, I guess we could call it. But anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the transition and what it has done in my life. And this is not my first rodeo. I've tried detransitioning, gosh. First time was in 2015, and this would probably be my fourth or fifth, if I'm to be exact, and my last. I have no desire ever to go back to portraying this Mark Angelo character that I created. It was like an acting role for me. It allowed me to escape my pain it allowed me to, to hide the things that I was feeling by projecting and creating a persona. I have no need for that anymore, nor do I wish to use that kind of coping mechanism ever again. I want to face my pain. I want to face the things that life throws at me. And I find that that will be better than what I was doing in the past. I have aged enormously. I, Excuse me, I look at myself in the mirror now and, and I see all these defects that I've created. Like, you know, look at this, you know, and then just, just things. I mean, dealing from not having hair on my head and still dealing with trying to shave hairs that are growing all over my body. That's difficult. That is something very difficult. And although I am not a vain person whatsoever, but these are things that are like a reminder of what I did. A reminder of what I put myself through. It was almost like I was trying to hurt myself and thinking that I was helping myself. But in fact, it was like sadistic, you know, doing the things that I did. And I understand that for some people, transitioning is the greatest thing ever. They want the bald head and they want the beard and they want the hairy body and they feel great. But for me, it wasn't. For me, it was fun maybe for the first couple of years. It's like a new adventure. But then after a while, it's like, wait a minute, you know, I mean, I've got to live with baldness and live with all this hair growing on my body. And it's just, 
it became bothersome, but I didn't know how to get out. It's like, I thought, well, I jumped in this water, now I gotta swim or sink. And damn if I was gonna sink, because the proudness of me was like, never let them see you sweat. Let them think that you're happy in your skin, that you're okay with what you did. But I wasn't, and I was not gonna admit to that back in the day. But I am, at the point in my life, well, I will admit my faults. I don't need to hide them. What does it do by hiding them? Absolutely nothing. So, in saying that, it's important for me to be transparent from now on. It's important for me to understand that what I did didn't solve the problems that I had. The problems will continue to be there. You either face them and get at the root, but putting band-aids never solves anything. One of the hardest things for me to deal with my transition was losing my hair. That was my pride and joy. And I transitioned all for vanity. I was trying to lose weight and I started playing with steroids because I wanted it fast. I wanted, I didn't want to do the work and I wanted fast results. I wanted a better body, and that came with a price. By taking steroids, I started building the body that I wanted, but it started giving me facial hair and hair all over my body. And then when I got myself into that trouble, I thought transitioning was gonna be my way out. And it worked for a little bit, but then it stopped working. So vanity is one of those things that I find, and that's why I was always pointing at that, because for me, it was a sense of vanity. And vanity, in my humble opinion, never solves anything. It's like you're trying to stop holes from leaking, but it gets to a point where there's not enough hands to stop the water from leaking. Because you may solve one problem, but then create another, and another, and another. And this has been my experience. It may not be yours. I, I can't take back what I did. I surely can't but I could try to be a light for others. I wanna say that I am an advocate and will continue to advocate for my LGBTQ family. For instance, I was just reading this article, and it's really sad, that a trans boy died by suicide after being misgendered by hospital staff. Well, I'll tell people this, you know, do you want to be the cause of the death of someone because you refuse to have compassion and kindness in your heart to give that person what they need to have a better day. And this is what I wrote on my Facebook wall. So I ask you, those of you who are hell-bent to call someone by what you feel like calling them versus what they wish to be called or addressed as, what harm is there to make someone feel good versus making them feel bad. I mean, what, what do you have to lose? So then many of you may say, well, I'm following what my God wants me to do. So seriously, you're, you're going to base your life and your actions on this creator, okay? A creator that really doesn't care about you because if he did, he would not create the world that he has created. And I know many of you don't see it that way. But you have to learn to think deeper than the way that you're thinking right now. So do you feel powerful by hurting someone to the point of suicide? Does your evil God mean that much to you? That you rather follow and obey a murderer than to care for a human life? This mother lost her child to suicide because hospital staff refused to acknowledge their requested gender pronoun, all because, this is what the article writes, the nurse said, honey, I would call you a he, quote unquote, but you, you're such a pretty girl. That is so condescending and so hurtful. And especially in the mind of a teen, who, who their world is still not settled and any little thing can hurt them. Do we want to be the reason behind people's pain? Or do we want to help people? Reach, reach their optimal potential. 
giving them joy. You might be the only person that day that provided that person with a nice word or words. You might be the choice between life or death for that individual. Why is it so difficult to be kind and compassionate? All for some religious belief? Seriously? Keep your God, because I don't want any part of it. And that's one of the reasons that after a while that I started to look at my coping mechanism, and one of my coping mechanisms was pretending to be this Christian lady. Because that's that was another poor coping mechanism. And after a while... You start looking at all these poor coping mechanisms that you develop and you like, these coping mechanisms aren't working. I'm not doing this anymore. I hurt myself and I hurt others while I do this. So it's important as human beings to learn to love one another, respect and accept one another. Whether you understand it or not, whether it's within your capacity, take yourself out of that occasion or uh, equation and realize that you may be the difference between life or death for a person, that you may be the reason for that person to have a smile versus a frown on their face. Learn to be a loving human being versus a bigoted a-hole. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to end it because it's already 11 minutes. I want to make these videos short. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me at transitionradioshow at gmail.com. I'll write your comments and questions right here. I love you guys, but remember to always love yourselves too. Have a good one.